cupped hand. And second thing, rhythmically you have to do with a good uh, effort so that the mechanical waves which is generated, it will transmit from the skin and you, are, you want the effects on the lungs, inside the lungs. So with that much intensity, you have to perform this particular technique. The second uh, is the vibrations. Again, it will help in loosening of the mucus plugs and the secretions. Isometric contractions we have to generate from the proximal muscle groups and only during the exhalation phase we have to apply this technique. Breathing exercise, almost all of us are aware, it improves the ventilation, effectiveness of the cuff mechanism, improves the strength and endurance of respiratory muscle, it prevents the atelectasis, it promotes the relaxation. But this is the main concern. Again, a Cochrane database of systematic review. It says breathing exercise over 4 to 15 weeks, it will improve the functional exercise capacity in people with COPD compared to low intervention. So breathing exercises are extremely helpful. And it is appeared to be the safe for all the COPD patients. And the another one is yoga breathing. They have mentioned about the pranayam. First sleep breathing and the diaphragmatic breathing, it is improving even the distance walked in the 6 minute by an average of 35 to 50 meters. As per the American Thoracic Society guidelines, we are performing the 6 minute walk test. We have the normative data for the same. But by performing the breathing exercise, it helps in improvement of the cardiovascular functional capacity also. Functionally, patient will improve their capability. That is the advantage of performing a small or a simple traditional or the conventional treatment. Autogenic drainage, ACBT and the force expiratory techniques. These are the European techniques uh, described long back by the Chivalia and very commonly used. Again, the advantage of this, all three approaches, it doesn't require any equipment or much of the technical expertise. And disadvantage is most of the therapists are not using this. Most of the therapists are just using breathing exercise and the partial drainage. We can definitely make a use of these techniques for the treatment. For phase 1, unsticking phase, it will lose the secretions in the periphery. Phase 2, it is collecting phase, which will move the secretions to the larger airway. And phase 3 is evacuating phase, which results in the removal of the secretion. So you can uh, just imagine that all the waste products, debris and all the infected materials that can be removed through the sputum and the cuff. So we don't need a uh, you know, broad spectrum and the high doses of antibiotics to subside those in infections. We can remove it by performing our techniques. So first with the first phase, okay, it will help in the mobilization, then it will go to the more centrally, then it will go to the up and then we can expel it. Now I will explain you that it is based on the equal pressure point when I will uh, teach you about coughing and huffing. Active cycle of breathing technique, we need to understand this diagram because force expiratory technique is said to be one of the best technique in the cardiopulmonary physiotherapy. Now this diagram says so many things about the uh, about human lungs. Inside the lungs we have a non-functional uh, collateral ventilation pathways but we can make a use this channel a functional one when it is required so the very important point is especially in the force expiratory technique and the incentive spirometer which we prescribe to all the patients while uh, before and after CABG or any cardiac surgery or for the patient who is on the COPD. We need to explain to them uh, the importance is to take all the balls up, it means take it up. But more than that, the importance is to hold that ball to the up for say 5 to 10 seconds. So holding the ball up in the incentive spirometer, it will create a pressure inside the thorax and it will help in improving the channels which is present inside the lung, which is interbronchular, bronchiolar, and the interalveolar. So it will improve your uh, channels of Martins, channels of Lombards, and the pores of horns. And that way it will be very helpful for your patient to, uh, that non-functional area of the lung is now going towards the functional side. What happens is the area which has to be occupied by the air in the lung because of the chronic pathology now it is filled up with the secretions and the cough. So that area is now becoming non-functional. So we have to either remove, mobilize and remove those secretions and make this area functional or else go for the alternative ways like improving the collateral ventilation channels. Now active cycle of breathing technique, it will mobilize as well as help in the clearance of the secretions. Advantages, patient can do or perform this uh, exercise even at the home and no equipment is required. This is the advantage. 
Now, what the evidence or the research says about both the technique, autogenic drainage and the ECBT, that AD and ECBT both is as effective for clearing the airway secretions and improving the lung functions. And these techniques can be used in the stable COPD patients according to the patient's and the physiotherapist's preferences. So we cannot think of giving in the acute phase when the patient is not able to do the breath control, patient is not able to perform the other thoracic mobility exercises. But once the patient is stable, we can make a use of these techniques which is giving a good result. Coughing and huffing as we all are knowing, when the secretions are moved to the main central airway, then to remove those secretions we can go with the two approach. Once, uh, one approach is when the patient is not able to remove it, okay, we have to negatively create the pressure and remove the secretions by the means of any technique or the approach like a suctioning what we are doing. So negatively we are creating the pressure and all the secretions are coming out. Again it is of a battery operated manual and even I would like to add one more point that many of the students they have asked me a uh, few times back that at home how to do the suctioning. These machines we cannot carry everywhere and it is costly also. So for them I would like to tell one thing, there is something called Lupin strap. A small new equipment came, very cost effective, a small sputum cup, it is like a sputum cup connected with the two pipe. The one pipe is, uh, we have to insert it into the patient's mouth and another we have to keep it in our mouth and we have to create the negative pressure by sucking the air in like this. And to the certain extent, we can remove all the secretions from the chest. But only disadvantage is, okay, we may get the infections from the patient. But the advantage is non-infective cases and at the home, if we want to do with the precautions, we can make a use of the lupin strap. A very effective and a good method to use for the removal of the secretions at the home. Now, coughing alone will not be able to remove all the secretions because only up to the seventh generation of the bronchi, when the secretions are up, we are able to cough. But when it is inside the lower part of the lung, we need huffing, we need other airway clearance techniques so that the secretions will be mobilized, it will become loosed, and it will come to the more upper airway. And then we can remove it with the help of the coughing. But we have to remember, coughing is a vigorous maneuver. So whenever it is possible, we have we have to try with the huffing whenever it is possible, but when uh, required, we have to go with the cuffing as well. Now, this is a one area where almost all the therapists are not using this technique in the cuffing. We ask the patient to go for the repeated coughing and remove the cough. Many a time it leads to the laceration inside the trachea, it leads to the uh, hoarseness of the voice then uh, repeated coughing can lead to the other problems. But what we need to do is, patient will be able to remove the cough only when there is a sufficient amount of air which is present inside the lung. So we cannot ask the patient to go for the vigorous coughing. Before coughing, we have to ask the patient to take a deep breath in, let the air to go inside, let the thorax to uh, properly filled up with the air, and the moment the patient is holding the breath, the pressure inside the thorax will be built up, and always the air will move from the higher pressure towards the lower pressure side. And then when you are directing the patient to go for the cough, patient will be able to remove the cough. So these four phases we have to remember, irritation, deep inhalation, compression and the exhalation, four phases of the coughing. So don't ask your patient to go for repeated coughing, ask the patient to take breath in more amount of air and then ask the patient to hold and then ask the patient to go for the coughing. Huffing is a, also known as the half coughing and the advantage is it is not as forceful as coughing. It is divided into three phases, uh, high lung volume, mid lung volume and low lung volume and that we are making use in the autogenic drainage. It is as simple as like just we are uh, exhaling into the mirror or a window to steam it up. So it's very simple technique but very effective. With this infographics, the another six techniques which I would like to draw your attention that is respiratory muscle training, RMT, aerobic exercise, most of you are aware of this, dyspnea relieving techniques or the positions, early mobilization, the concept which is getting the attention, chest PNF and the breathing rate training. The first one, respiratory muscle training. In most of the colleges nowadays, they have this availability of this equipment where the post-graduation studies are going on, that is respiratory muscle trainer device. 
it is very good device for improving the strength of the inspiratory muscles and this is of a two different variety the first one is a spring inbound in that so we have to adjust the resistance as per the uh, resistance of the spring and the different uh, numbers are given the second one is with the diameter the first we start with the uh, broader diameter as the condition of the patient is improving we use the smaller diameters and uh, we train the muscles so it can be defined as a technique that aims to improve the function of the respiratory muscles through the specific exercises and these equipments are not costly available in the india available outside the store also few people are selling and it is cost effective and we can make a use of this device in our practice now respiratory muscle training it starts from the different facilitatory and inhibitory techniques in the intensive care unit and first we train the patients with the proprioceptive and the tactile uh, tactile stimulus how to make use of the muscles properly once the patient is able to make a use of the muscles properly let the patient to do it under your observation once the patient is able to do it properly very important one is let the patient to do it with the functional activities and once the patient is able to do it all the activities functional activities and along with that few of the breathing control technique or the diaphragmatic or the other breathing exercises if you want that there is a need for strengthening of this muscle you can make a use of the sandbags books weight cuff or the any resistance then only we can improve the strength of the muscle so diaphragmatic strengthening is also required in the respiratory muscle training aerobic exercise is getting a good attention in the general population and we can provide this exercise at three different setup first is in the physiotherapy opd the second one is in the inpatient department and third uh, third one is outside anywhere okay we can give the aerobic exercise any in any exercise where we make use of the aerobic energy system aerobic uh, system that is considered as the aerobic exercises so in the outside we basically deals with the bicycling running walking jogging swimming okay, aerobic dance this all are the forms of the aerobic exercise and inside the our opd we make use of the treadmill arm ergometer bicycle ergometer and the other modified bicycling and the other things and in patient even we make use of the pedometer also for giving the exercise for the prolonged duration this is very important just by giving the position we can relieve the dyspnea into the patient different dyspnea relieving positions so if uh, basically this two in the standing position we ask the patient to lean against uh, lean to the support of the wall or against the wall bending forward then in the side lying position keeping the pillow beneath the knees and the beneath the uh, head and in the supine position also we feel relaxed but it is not optimal position for the breathing so we can provide relaxation by uh, keeping a pillow beneath the knee when the sitting just leaning forward or leaning forward with the help of the pillow now this all positions you can give it to the patient who is having status asthmaticus or who is having a difficulty in the breathing for recruiting the accessory muscles of the inspiration so uh, when the respiratory muscles are fatigued the work can be taken over to the other muscles by recruiting them so the breathlessness will be subsiding along with that we can start with the pulse the breathing exercises as well now i would like to just focus on the importance of the early mobilization in the intensive care unit the critically ill patients they have a limited activity because of their equipment diagnosis and their condition because in the patient uh, who is in the icu they are under the constant effect of the sedation they are having drips drains catheters all the tubes so it is very difficult to uh, you know provide the treatment to them for the early ambulation we have to take care of so many parameters i was treating one of the patient of uh, dr modi sir who was diagnosed with the motor neuron disease i have treated for five long years and what is the importance of the early mobilization during the initial phase till the last phase i used to take support from two more people along with me and we used to make that patient walk along with the ventilator one person will take care of the ventilator another person will take care of the other arrangements and we used to provide the support and ambulate the patient and that ambulation has helped a lot that patient and during that five years hardly four to five times he had a history of admitting into the hospital because of a pneumonia or any other chest complications we were in a position to maintain his condition 
uh, as far as the lung functions are concerned just by providing a very good chase to physiotherapy. Second, as a result of limited activity, when the activity is limited, the deconditioning will start sets into the patient. Then another thing, muscular weakness will start. Use it or lose it. Many a times you have heard in the author and sports PT same is applicable here. And even the infections will set in. Basically the nosocomial infections or the hospital acquired infections, sometimes physician or the iatrogenic infections as well in the hospital. So these are many factors we have to see in the ICU. And ICU based interventions, we are playing a role for the reduction in the ongoing physical and neuropsychological impairments. So let all the vitals to stabilize, slowly progress for the early ambulations and then we can go with the other exercise from the chest PT side. And this early mobilization, what it will do, it will help the, uh, in minimizing the loss of the functional abilities. It will minimize the loss of functional abilities and that's why the stay of the patient in the ICU can be minimized. A very good, uh, you know, benefit from our side towards the patient. We are enhancing the recovery. We are uh, you know, reducing the length of stay in the ICU and financially also it is good, physically also the patient is recovering. So use of this program demands a collaborative effort. We have to work as a team in the intensive care unit along with the intensivist, chest physician and the pulmonologist. And growing number of the patients treated in the ICU by the chest physiotherapist all over the world making this non-pharmacological approach both welcome and interesting because we don't need any equipment and we are not harming the patient. So early mobilization is a very important concept and we have to implement for any patient who is admitted in the intensive care. Chase PNF, PNF we are dealing since many years, very old technique, highly effective and a very good evidence for the same. Nothing much to say about the PNF, the best uh, technique available in our toolbox. Externally applied proprioceptive and textile stimulus that produces the reflex re respiratory movement responses that appears to alter the rate and depth of breathing. Basically we go with the uh, intercostal stretch, okay, stimulation of the different muscles, okay, inhibition of the different muscles and uh, we can improve the condition of the patient. We are basically dealing with the biomechanics and facilitatory and inhibitory techniques. Now this technique is very important, breathing retraining. Basically, breathing is an act which uh, the first act an individual will do in this world when they born is the breathing. And the last is when the breathing stops or the heart stops, the individual will be no more. But this technique is retraining. Again, we are learning the breathing control and to pace with the different activities. So again, we are teaching the patient how to do the correct breathing pattern. So re-educating or correcting the dysfunctional breathing pattern. In uh, clinical setup, we will see very commonly Biot's breathing, chain stroke breathing, paradoxical breathing, intercostal in drawing, etc. So we have to correct this breathing, abnormal breathing pattern. Even the normal breathing pattern like uh, thoracoabdominal, abdominal thoracic, pure thoracic or only abdominal. If you found as per the age and sex it is abnormal, it is our duty to correct this breathing pattern. So what are the techniques we use? We use first the breathing exercise, very simple and very effective technique, diaphragmatic breathing exercise, the main muscle of inspiration and exercises are needed, paced breathing with different exercise, activity of daily living and ask the patient to perform the exercise and excel with the effort, as per the effort of the patient, slowly we give the breathing exercise. Now what are the other important approaches? So the first one, that is yoga. It's gaining the popularity. Now the evidences are also available. Worldwide popular, highly effective. Again, history comes to the Indian origin and we have to make use of the different asanas and the kriyas. Okay? Yoga is highly effective for correcting the cardiovascular dysfunction. Hydrotherapy. Uh, the history of physiotherapy started with the gallants and the uh, massage and hydrotherapy. So uh, from there till today hydrotherapy is the treatment of choice, helps in building the endurance for uh, cardio, cardiac patient and helps in the strengthening of the muscle for the peripheral muscles, upper and the lower extremity and the trunk muscles for the patients. Now relaxation techniques are also very important. We have three different types of the relaxation exercise, the physical, psychological and the combined one. 
the physical or the physiological relaxation methods uh, are your Jacobson's, Laura Mitchell's, Alexander's, Poppins, Borkovic's, etc. The psychological one is your uh, goal-directed visualization, visual imagery techniques, etc. And combined technique that includes your breathing exercise, uh, then your pranayam and the other uh, approaches. So highly effective because stress is again we can say it like one of the major non-communicable disease and present in almost all the individual to the certain extent. So relaxation exercise is also an important tool in our toolbox. Now this technique I don't know, I have not applied in any of my patients but why I have included here acupuncture is if we open any standard textbooks in cardiopulmonary physiotherapy, uh, let's take an example of uh, Jennifer Pryor and S. Ammani Prasad. The first technique you will find nowadays, the recent addition, is the acupuncture. That this, will, this is the first way of treatment even in the cardiorespiratory physiotherapy. I don't know, I have not applied in any of the patients, but this is in a practice in the few of the countries. A pranayam again. Uh, Morning also we had a small session on the U. Pranayama is again very highly effective uh, uh, treatment approach and we can make a use of this technique. Surya and Chandra Nuluma Pranayama, Nali Sukhdi Pranayama, Siddhi Siddhari Siddhanta Pranayama, Brahmari Pranayama and many other Pranayama techniques and other yogic techniques also for the correction of the breathing. Small is beautiful. Steam inhalation, most of the time the patients are asking this question to me that whether to add Vicks balm into the steam inhalation, whether to add eucalyptus oil into the steam inhalation. So along with one critical care specialist, we had a discussion and we found few reviews which says that it is better if you don't add anything into the water, just have your patient just plain normal steam inhalation. Because in some of the balm they found out uh, content of the uh, chili powder and which is said to be high acid and causing the nasal irritation and acts like a counter irritation. So better to avoid use of anything, just have a pain steam inhalation. Second thing, few patients they are developing the infections and problem because that steam inhalation machine they are keeping it in the home. When required immediately they uh, pour the water in that and they take the steam inhalation. So what happens when they have not used more than six months or one a year, it is filled up with the dust. And this all dust is going into the respiratory tract when they are using it without cleaning. So simple modification, don't use any balm or a eucalyptus oil and uh, clean it properly, this uh, steam inhalation device and if needed, you take it. These are the other instruments, flutter, high frequency chest wall oscillation, incentive spirometry. IPPB, mechanical insufflator and exufflator, humidifier. Humidifier, I would like to add one important point clinically that any patient to whom you are giving the oxygen with the humidifier, it has to fill up with the water because we have to introduce the humidified oxygen or the air into the patient's respiratory tract. If we are, water is not added, it will create a crust formation of the secretions, it will become thick and then afterwards we cannot remove. Nebulizer, mucolytex, bronchodilators, we can make a use of it. Manual hyperinflation, back suctioning apparatus and inspiratory muscle trainer. Uh, PEF, uh, positive expiratory pressure. This device is again a cost effective, highly effective and it provides back pressure within the airway during the expiration. It moves the secretions towards the oropharynx and the evidence says it reduces the number of acute exacerbations and it will enhance the less use of the antibiotics and the mucolytics. So this is the effectiveness of PEP device. In our clinical setup in uh, SSPTC college, and even I have one, that is the flutter device, very reasonable uh, cost it is available and uh, we can make a use of it. Again, a positive expiratory pressure device, but it is position dependent. So first we have to keep it in the downward position. Once the patient is mastering it at the neutral position, and then if the patient is able to do it, then we have to take it into the inverted position. Again, it is helps in the modification of mucus viscoelasticity and uh, it gives a very good improvement in the PFT parameters okay, before and after if we check. RC Cornet is again a similar device, but it is position independent. Any position we can use it. Again, very reasonable cost it is available. We can make a use of this. Not much technical expertise is needed. Again, it help in uh, improvement in the PFD parameters. Acapella is again like a, a flutter device and it is again a PEP position independent and Cochrane reviews 2009 it says that self-administered uh, airway clearance techniques and it is more often like a choice of the therapist 
and uh, daily routine patient can perform it at home. Incentive spirometer, I want only to concern that explain the patient about the collateral ventilation channel. Taking the ball is important, but more than that, the important is holding that ball into the up position for 5 to 10 seconds. That will help in the collateral ventilation channels. For child who is not cooperative, we can go with the different uh, incentive spirometer device than the routine one which we are using it for the adults. High frequency chest wall oscillation, it is like a vest and connected with the machine providing the vibrations with the higher frequency which is set by the therapist. It will loosen the secretion and afterwards with the cuffing, huffing or with the suctioning we can remove it. Same with the insufflators and the exufflators, it provides uh, a pressure from the uh, positive as well as the negative and it will help in the rapid change in this pressure, it will stimulate the airflow changes and that will help in the scrotum clearance. My last point for the today's discussion is very small and simple that we need to understand the importance of the patient education. The language which the patient understands, not the language which patient knows. So effective health education is very important. Second, as a cardiopulmonary physiotherapist, we have to go with the tailor-made approach. That means for each and every COPD patient also, there will be slight change in the exercise, uh, how we are giving it. There will be change in the exercise intensity, frequency, etc. And the third thing is always keep the sessions short, repeat and repeat till the patient is performing up to the mark. This we have to take into the consideration. I forget to mention about the exercise intensity which most of the therapists are not following. In the cardiorespiratory physiotherapy, we prescribe the exercise intensity based on three factors. The first one is rate of perceived exertion, box scale, the conventional or the traditional one and the second one is the modified one. So based on that, we prescribe the exercise intensity. And another thing, box scale, we use it for breathlessness, but it can be used even for the assessment of the fatigue. This we have to keep it in the mind. Second, that is based on the target heart rate. Any cardiac patient we are treating, we have to teach them how to take the cell pulse, set a target heart rate for our patient based on the maximum heart rate and the resting heart rate. It is always in a range and patient has to check their heart rate before, during and after exercise if the therapist is not available. And the third method of prescribing the exercise intensity that is through VO2 max. So that we do it in the lab with the help of the VO2 max analyzer. But I think none of the colleges also in this uh, uh, Gujarat, they have a VO2 max analyzer. So we can make use of the uh, uh, Queen's College step test or the other formulas and we can prescribe the intensity based on the VO2 max. In a conclusion of this particular, in the conclusion of this particular uh, presentation, I would like to emphasize that there is availability of low-cost airway clearance devices which can be used even in the Indian setup. This is very reasonably available and we can use it in our patient. There are many tools and approaches, but the selection of the tools needs extensive knowledge for the good interpretation and the clinical.